So, Moondog Rex, Randy Colley, he's in the WWE. He's finishing his run as the Moondogs. Uh, it's my understanding he comes up with an idea for a new tag team. Is that correct? He was he was instrumental in it, yes. He had approached me with a couple ideas. Uh, we put our heads together and tweaked it, and then with uh, input from uh, a couple other people, uh, we finally came down with, I would say... 75 percent of the character and the gimmick and then that had to be tweaked and uh things added and things deleted so yeah but he and it was basically after the uh mad max movie came out and was such a hit so everybody seems to think that we stole it from the road warriors but we really didn't i mean there was incidents and course paint and things like that and outfits were similar but uh that wasn't our initial intent no you knew randy from your mass superstar run yeah i knew him i know well he was in the south too but uh he had just finished up their very successful run as the moon dogs and uh i think that was probably one of the things that was a hindrance to him because when we first went out the first night, and I think it was in either Hershey or Allentown, I might have them backwards. Uh, nobody knew who I was, of course, because they didn't have a reference. The only last time I was there was with a mask, but they recognized Randy immediately. And from the day one, I knew it was going to work. It just wasn't going to work with him. So I, we waited till the next night. And there again, it might have been Hershey, it might have been Allentown. I don't remember the sequence. Everybody oohed and awed about the, the gimmick and the presentation, but everybody knew who it was Moondog, Moondog, Moondog. And when we went back to the dressing room, I told him, I said, this gimmick's really going to work. And I was already scheduled to go back to Japan. So I said, well, you know, if you want to try it, fine. And I, he, he was gracious enough to step aside. He knew it wasn't going to work because they recognized him. And there again, he also had never done any interviews before. So he was a little skeptical about uh, doing those. He always had a manager that talked for him. And uh, there was going to be a time when we had to do interviews. And uh, he didn't feel comfortable with that. So he graciously stepped aside. He said, no, no, I, I know it's going to work. And Vince offered him a, a position, a character to uh, continue under another gimmick. And uh, Shadows? The Shadows, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they were a mid-card uh, team, but they did very well. And then he went, he left after a, probably about six months or a year or so, and uh, I think he carried on a Detroit demolition or something like that, but I'm not sure. That was on the independent scene. Now, Bill, how did you how did you get hooked up with Barry? Well, we were when, when we decided that it wasn't going to work with Randy, not because of his work. It just wasn't going to work because people recognized him. And uh, I sat with Vince and uh, we had discussed a couple other people, which I won't name. And I said, well, they're already here or they were recently here. It's going to be the same thing as Randy. They're going to recognize them, whether it's Joe Schmo, the big the main event, Joe Schmo. They're going to know it's Joe Schmo. It's not demolition. So he's he said, well, then you select somebody and in the meantime uh, I think Steamboat and Hebner had contacted Barry for wrestling because he was unhappy in the mid-Atlantic area so they approached me with him his name and I knew Barry through Ivan Koloff never worked with him but Ivan gave him a grade A recommendation and everybody I talked to said that he was a you know, honest above board guy so we met, we actually met in Charlotte and uh, decided to go with it from there. Then I went to Japan and Barry had some time off. And then when we came back from Japan, we started demolition. 
It was with Johnny V at first. It was with Johnny V. He was our original manager. And it wasn't anything against Johnny, but you know his character, sometimes out of left field and sometimes out of left center. And then when you're expecting him out of left field, it's coming out of right field. <laughs> so uh, you couldn't have the ha ha with that militia, right? Yeah, he just didn't. He, he didn't meet or match our characters. We're supposed to be this kick butt team and take names and kiss a kick ass. And, and uh, Johnny would crack a joke. And we looked around and the only sinister manager that they had right there then that I felt comfortable with, uh, they had some good managers. They had Slick and they had Jimmy Hart and of course Bobby Heenan and stuff. But Fuji fit our character. He was devious you know, sneaky. Uh, you know, one thing about Fuji, he wasn't going to interfere. He wasn't going to try to steal the limelight. He actually served as a very good manager because when we would finish the night's events, he would critique the match, constructive criticism, do this, that was good, that wasn't good, tweak that, and uh, all up and down the roads. Uh, we would try to do better each next night. So he was very helpful. Any good uh, Mr. Fuji rib stories? Well, you know, Fuji was a ribber, but fortunately for us, he didn't rib us. Maybe he knew <laughs> where his bread was buttered. So, But uh, you hear all these stories, and of course, Fuji wouldn't admit to them if they were true. But he was kind of a a real strong overboard river from what we heard, but he didn't do anything with us. What was your initial impressions when you heard that music for the first time? What iconic oh, music I loved you guys it. Had? I loved it. Jimmy Hart. Matter of fact, we saw Jimmy this past weekend in Boston. We were up there for a signing and uh, uh, Jimmy was there and we were talking about the music and he he presented it to us while we were in the in the gardens in a in a locker room, and it fit our character. I thought, you know, the heavy metal and the pounding sounds and the the beat, it just it it really fit us to a T. And they played it here, they played it here on the regular radio stations, wow. and uh, uh, my daughter was in high school at the time and. All the kids were talking about the song and about her dad, and you know, made her feel good too. Nice. 